everyone. In today's video, I thought we'd take a few minutes to take a look at the new and updated sim brief and kind of how the workflow for it has changed a little bit. So uh, for those of you not familiar with this tool, uh, sim brief is a tool that allows you to dial in a couple different things for like a takeoff position as well as a arrival position. And it will actually do all the math, homework and calculations for you to go ahead and create a flight. This is an incredible tool that's been around for a little while now. Uh, Navigraph bought it a little while ago as well. And like I said, it's uh, almost invaluable. Uh, don't worry about the flight plans here. I use a couple different things for flight plans. I'm not a big airliner guy, but at the same token is I always come back here uh, whenever I know I need to do something with airliners. So let's get started. Uh, first things first, I'm gonna go flip this to dark mode so everybody doesn't go blind there. And you can see your last flight and everything else is kind of arranged. You got some details, a lot, bunch of new things up at the tippy top. There's actually like the sim brief downloader. You've got a whole system status. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and hit the new flight button. Now, one of the things that has changed here big time is that we now have this little, nice little representation of our map over here on the right. This is really, really, really useful uh, because when we're planning our flights, we kind of want visually to go ahead and see what we're doing here. You can see I can kind of zoom in sort of a thing and take a look at the whole different areas. Uh, you can also come up here and there's a bunch of options. You can actually push that button and turn on individual positions here. So you can see all the different options as you're going around. You know, you want to study some airspaces, for example. Maybe you want to see what the wind looks like at different altitudes. Maybe I want to do 24,000 feet, for example. And all that's represented dynamically down here, which makes it much, much, much simpler to go ahead and plan your flights. So using this tool is uh, relatively simple. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make your way up in the top. Now, one of the things they changed here is they actually made it so that the critical boxes you have to have are going to be marked in red here. Now, let's say we're flying for our air float today, AFL, let's say we're flight one, and we can go ahead and pick what our particular departure and arrival point is. Now, uh, we'll make it pretty easy. We'll do a shirt and evo, and uh, we'll head to, uh, let's see here, we'll do a Heathrow. Go ahead and click on that, and what that's going to do is it's going to generate that initial flight. Now, the interesting thing here is the fact that nothing's going to work on it yet until we define what type of aircraft we're actually dealing with here. So I'm going to go up to aircraft type and you're going to notice there's a wide variety of different aircraft in here. Uh, for example, if I'm going to do this in a 777 freighter model, I've got it right there. If I want to do it in a 737-700, which is most likely what I'm going to fly, you can actually click that and it will automatically go ahead and calculate all the critical numbers that you need for your actual flight itself. Now, like I said, this has come a really long way uh, from the earlier versions and it's really, really cool with some of the other buttons you have. All these little dots that you see along the route are now the suggested paths. And if you come down here, you'll actually see there's a bunch of different suggested ones that they have. If you look very, very close on the side, it actually says VATSIM here, it says SIMBRIEF here. These are all the different recommended flight paths. If I wanted to change it, for example, I could click it. This is going to take me more over Denmark, more over the Baltic. If I click on this one, this one's going to take me more over kind of uh, Europe, as you can kind of see right here. Uh, one of the neat tools is if you want to actually dial in your own route, you can actually come down here and dial it in directly. And then you can bop the analyze root button and what it will do is it'll scan it to make sure it is valid. Now you probably notice this big angry red text right here. This is Eric 2103. This is just saying that my navigational data is out of date. Uh, you can choose to purchase navigational data from the Navigraph for a nominal fee each month and you can keep it as updated as possible. Those of you who fly in virtual airlines, um, you know exactly all about this stuff. The rest of us, again, you can use exactly what is appropriate for you and you can actually see that I'm almost two years out of date here with my navigational data. So it's actually kind of neat how that works. Up in the upper left corner now, and we can go ahead and dial in a couple different options here. Uh, one thing we can do is if there's a unique descent profile, not for us, you could dial that in there. You could even apply a full factor, which basically allows you to dial in how much extra fuel you're gonna consume. So for example, if for whatever reason the, the uh, model I used in flight sim was a little extra gas burny, I could set this to PO5, and that would mean I have a 5% increase in its expected fuel burn, which of course will have an impact on everything else we do. Now, one really, really cool thing here, which I really got a kick out of, is that if you have a particular um, Boeing type here. If you want to, you can actually grab a variant of it. In this case, you can see the PMDG model for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So if I want to go ahead and grab this one and set this to economy class, I'm actually defining that immediately and it's going to grab those details right out of that specific class. Another important number here when you're working in SimBrief is this guy right here called your cost index. This is basically going to allow you to either set your cruise speed by a specific speed, such as Mach 0.8, or to dial in the actual index itself. Now, without getting too, too detailed here, the cost index is basically a ratio of how much gas you want to burn versus how fast you want to go. Uh, obviously, if you travel a little bit slower, you burn less gas, but the airframe is in the air longer and vice versa. So this is a kind of a fun little calculation. You can actually look these up online if you want. 
Below that, of course, uh, you can go ahead and dial in anything that you need to do. Uh, one thing I like, you got your contingency fuel. All the presets are in here now, which is awesome. Reserve fuel if you're flying at night. Obviously, you got to do what the FAA is. I just like putting that on auto, so I don't have to stress about it. You have your taxi out and in. Uh, this is simply a calculation of how long it's going to take you to get to the runway. If we know, uh, we're just going to start it and go. Oh, let's put five and five. You can also select multiple alternates. We can actually hit none, and that'll shut off our alternate airport option. Over here on our right, we have a couple different options that we can do super, super detailed nav log. A lot of times I will shut this off unless I want to be old school and actually pull out the pen and write it out as I go. That's pretty cool. You have ETOPS planning, uh, that basically in the event that you have an engine out, uh, you need to be able to calculate how far you can travel to be able to still safely get back on one engine. You can do step climb analysis. Again, this is something I usually leave off. Uh, runway analysis is wonderful because it'll tell you what runways to use, which is really handy when picking out procedures. You can also have it include NOTAMs, and that's uh, very interesting because it grabs real NOTAMs. And the problem with this is that it's a lot of information on the bottom of your brief. You know, I fly in the real world, and I will say for the record that my weather briefing is like from here to here. My NOTAM briefing is 25 pages after that. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, next, coming down here, we have the ability to dial in. This is all optional stuff. A lot of people, you can just like that if you want. But one of the things I like about it is you can come down here and you can dial in exactly how many passengers you want and how much extra freight. So, for example, I could come in here and say I'm 6,500 pounds. Yes, a pound is an American version of a kilogram. It's, it's not quite the same thing, but, you know, just have fun. You can also define your departures and anything like that as well as your zero fuel. And this one I love. You can define the altitude or you can leave it on auto, which will actually do all the calculations for us. Definitely recommend that for you. Crawling down here, uh, this is kind of handy. You have a little uh, route finder right here, which actually can calculate a route for you in the event that you don't necessarily have a route up here that you particularly like. Uh, the reason I like this is if you want to do really hilariously silly things like fly at 737s out of like, you know, my home airport at Brainerd, which I guess technically you could do, you could actually come in here and have a calculate silly things like that. Alternate airports, historical weather. Uh, we don't have this access, but um, it's actually pretty cool because you can grab real world weather from other times. And of course, at the very, very bottom, you can turn winds aloft on and off. The reason this is actually really useful to you is if you're using flight sim and you're using one of the presets like high clouds, you want to shut this off because otherwise your calculations won't be as precise as they probably could be otherwise. So when you're completely done all these little details, here. That's basically, the, that's the stressful part. Now we come up here and hit the generate flight button. What it will do is it'll go ahead and start quackulating a couple moments later. It's going to spit this out and this is oh, as far as uh, planning goes. You know, we used to have really special dedicated software applications to do what this just did and as fast as you can snap your fingers. So here's all the critical information we want. Ooh, why would you put the, no. <laughs> Americans are fun. So what we have here is that you can go ahead and see all your arrival departure, the aircraft, the airframe. It gives us an estimate of flight time. In my experience, that's if you do real world weather, that's within a minute typically. So it's actually very, 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 very accurate. Coming down here, it tells you what your initial altitude is, cost index, distances, tells you your winds, tells you your fuel, tells you ETOPS, tells everything you need to know. You also get this beautiful load sheet. I love the way that they don't put this inside of the flight plan. I mean, you can read that if you want, but this is awesome because now you can come right into your flight sim and take Take this number right here and punch it right into your aircraft itself so you have the ability to know exactly how much fuel you got plus your cargo. Like I said, all fantastic in this thing. Here's our route. You can copy paste that. There's even a copy button so you can paste it into whatever software. Uh, no disparse remarks or anything along those lines. Now, if you come down to ATC flight plan, uh, those of you who are on VATSIM, surprise, there's all the information that you're going to need to do. There's also this briefing. Now, when we did a video on this ages ago, you'll probably recognize this briefing. This is the same briefing. Um, oh, 90% the same briefing as the one that you want. This format, by the way, is called LIDO. It's a, one of the selective formats that you can utilize. I actually like this format because it's easy and it gives you all the really, really important stuff like your load sheet up at the tippy top. It also lets you know what happens if you change altitudes. And you can go ahead and see what speed changes is and what it does to your flight. It also gives you all your critical times. It gives you, and this beautiful thing here, which will let you know exactly what you need to do when you go to punch in the weights inside the flight simulator. Below that, you're going to get the super duper duper detailed flight log. You can actually print the sucker out if you want. And you can even write the actual fuel burns on there if you want to get really old school. But like you can see, we run all the way down to 6.2 tons here, which is pretty impressive. And then, of course, you have all your wind information located here. You have your iCal flight plan. And if you had NOTAMs turned on, like I said, I turned them off, you would have a ton of stuff down here that would kind of let you know. And one of the nice things is the good folks who are at SimBrief will actually give you a little heads up down here to just sort of let you know uh, sort of what's going on in the latest versions. 
Now, if we come down to Departure Airport, this is really cool because uh, they've uh, adjusted this now, so it's a little bit easier to just grab this information. You can actually come down here and you can get critical things like your elevation. You can get all the current weather. Obviously, it's marginal right now. It's uh, winter in you know, Russia right now, so I imagine it's not the greatest weather. You can also get anything that you need as far as ATIS. Uh, we can see that right now over in VATSIM. You actually can get that information directly. The arrival airport, of course, Heathrow, I imagine, is also going to be available on ATIS. Very busy airport. You can see everything that they need here as far as those things go. And this is important. Now, I'll go ahead and press this one. This is just a little advertisement. But they actually allow you to download all the different informations for your flight management systems right here. You just click on the button and go. One of the buttons I love is this one right here. It'll actually open the website up, the whole flight plan, in SimBrief directly. So as soon as you hit that button, you can actually see exactly what it is you're doing here so that you can uh, double check that. That's really helpful for short flights. And then on the very, very, very bottom, and uh, this is always helpful for our fat sim folks, or again, if you're flying IVAL or anything like that, you can just boop, push this button right here, and it does everything. The entire flight plan will be loaded into that sim, and then you're completely ready to rock. Now, what I love about this, too, is up at the to be top, there's this cool little thing where you can do flight plan downloads. There's also this thing that says View PDF, and this gives you this beautiful piece of paper that allows, well, it will be a piece of paper when it comes out of my printer, but it gives you this great document here that you can go ahead and print out. Now, a lot of times what I will do with this one is I will print this out if I'm going to go hardcore that particular day, and I will print out all the critical things like my approaches and my runways and everything that I kind of need down there at the bottom so that I can go ahead and grab it. Now, now that all that's been done, if I were to go back to the dashboard, you'll probably notice that that flight now is uh, going to be kind of all set in here. Now, if I want to, I can go back to edit that flight and I can make some changes. Let's say, for example, you know, it took me a little bit extra time to be able to kind of escape from whatever. I'm like, oh, shoot, uh, let, me, let me change the time of day here. Let me, I'm actually even at 1500, which would be about three o'clock. Boop, boop, hit apply. And what that will do is now it knows to update this. So when I generate the flight plan, it will actually automatically update all those items. A lot of times the thing you'll see is we'll see a change of altitude and again, to take advantage of better winds. Sometimes you'll see a couple different pieces, and then it also gives you a version number down here on the left. So as you can see, all in all, this is a really, really neat product. Very, very easy to use. Uh, you basically sign up for a Navigraph account. Uh, come rolling on in here. If you want to update your data, you certainly can. And that gives you, like I said, a lot of really, really neat capabilities inside here as well. And now, like I said, uh, one thing you want to keep in mind is when you do go to download these things, I, each one of these is going to have kind of like a funny place where you're going to have to kind of put it. But uh, like I said, for the good folks over who play Microsoft Flight Simulator, for example, everything is already here, ready to go, and you can grab it just like that. Enjoy.